Okay, so our next speaker is Chiara Palo. Chiara is a space engineer with a PhD from Crowfield University, specializing in space debris mitigation. So she's currently working as instrument engineer on the RADCube project with the Magnometer Lab of a Space and Atmospheric Physics Group at Imperial College. And she's going to talk to us about some magic. Yeah. I understand. Okay. So thank you, Chiara. Good afternoon, everyone. So, yeah, I will talk a little bit about magic that is actually a miniaturized magnetometer. Um, so, a payload for space weather monitoring with CubeSat. So, just a bit of overview. So, I will start with the background and then I will go through more what is this uh, type of sensor and what we are currently working now. So the background is space weather. As you may know, uh, space weather is uh, affect uh, not only the satellite in space, but as well our infrastructure on ground. So um, it's uh, actually uh, within the, the space, one of the branches of the ESA space situation awareness. Uh, so space weather measurement, so the, the measurement that are needed to understand better and to predict the storm and substorm, are at the moment sparse. So there are uh, this, a different vision that have been launched in the past, for example, cluster and MMS. Uh, however, um, this, uh, because of the um, sparse measurement, uh, this represents an obstacle in understanding better the, what's really happening between uh, the sun and the earth. So what, uh, what's going on uh, also within our magnetosphere. So the solution or a possible a step to go further is uh, to go with a constellation missions uh, that would enable a, a comprehensive and broader set of the magnetic field data at different points simultaneously. However, of course, um, it's quite expensive to build a big satellite itself. So imagine if we go for the constellation mission. Uh, so a novel approach could be to exploit CubeSat platform. And but on this, of course, mass, power, uh, volume, uh, resources are limited. So uh, what are we doing at the Imperial College? We have heritage in the uh, building magnetometers. Uh, so not only flux gate, but as well an isotropic magnetoresistive magnetometer. So MAGIC is actually uh, an acronym for magnetometer from the IC, Imperial College. And so this is uh, a uh, three axis, uh, an isotropic uh, uh, magnetoresistive sensor. You can see here. So the size is really can uh, compare with a uh, one euro coin. And its design is hybrid because we need a really uh, ultra lightweight harness. Uh, you can see a little bit here the the break, um, and uh, as well, uh, since it's for science purpose, we want to have a sensor that perform uh, pretty well, so optimize noise performance and minimize the power. And as well, this suitable for CubeSat. Uh, so you can then see here the main element. Uh, so as I mentioned, the three uh, MR sensor, X, Y, Z axis, uh, a gate drive that is needed for flipping pulse for this sensor, um, and as well temperature sensor needed to monitor the temperature because the offset is pretty important to uh, it affect actually the temperature the offset of the sensor. So um, as I mentioned, this uh, heritage as uh, in-flight heritage, uh, Magic has flown a radion three CubeSat, so the three of cinema uh, launched in 2012 and 2013. Uh, Simona, actually, one of them was a uh, particular satellite bit uh, at the University of Berkeley. Um, and um, after this, um, we have developed an improved design for the Sam Jammer uh, microsatellite mission that was a solar sail mission uh, that developed on a certain point, and then NASA, due to basically delaying the prime, 
decide to uh, hold on the project. Uh, but uh, this was a good lesson learned uh, and uh, for the magic uh, design. Uh, so also uh, we have uh, in pretty interesting data from magic. So on cinema that detected the uh, magnetic field uh, fluctuation associated with field aligned currents over the northern rural oval. And here you can see uh, uh, the red arrow that are pointing actually the, uh, the gray uh, band that were, uh, what, where they were detected, uh, this transit uh, between 20 and 60 nanotesla. And actually these are consistent with the data from other satellites, uh, POS and DMSP. So, but what uh, we are working on is on uh, another mission, uh, it's called RADQ. It's a 3U CubeSat and it's a ESA-funded CubeSat under the uh, In Orbital uh, Demonstrator GSTP program. And it's a collaboration between uh, different uh, uh, research center and company. So the prime is uh, C3S from Hungary and the payload is developed by the MTA from Hungary is the Institute for Energy, Energy Research. Uh, uh, we are developing the uh, magnetometer and Astronica is the, um, uh, the responsible designer for the boom that is needed. You can see here uh, for, the, for, the, for the sensor for our, because we want to have a little bit far away and to uh, avoid uh, to detect really the spacecraft than the real field. So the aim and objective of this uh, is uh, to demonstrate uh, instrument, miniaturized instrumented clonology in low Earth orbit post space weather monitoring. And the goal of the sensor is to go farther in really understanding the field aligned current and ring current during geomagnetically disturbed condition. So here you can see a little bit more about uh, the, the sensor that is an evolved version of the previous one. For example, the volume has uh, reduced about 50% compared to the, mm, the sensor that was on cinema. And uh, we have an inboard sensor that is actually on the PCB. And this is the outboard sensor that is deployed by the boom. Here you can see the test screen boom that is copper beryllium and the interface. It's, uh, this is a prototype uh, testing really the interface. So the main sensor and control loop is a TRL9, but of course there has been some technical development. And here is just the main uh, feature just to um, make you understand a little bit more what actually the power needed. It's actually much less the, the, than one watt, but of course the, we are still uh, testing and uh, before the CDR phase for the new version. And um, also the sensitivity going to reach two nanotesla that's well rich before in calibrated. So uh, what are these technical developments from, from the mechanical thermal point of view? So the inclusion of intelligence on the via an at mega microcontroller, so that you use the standard, uh, enable you the standard communication protocol and as well flexibility in managing the instrument. So we can decide when we want to go in the size mode, so have more vector per second than compared to one. Um, and uh, as well as the, the pulses needed to reset uh, the sensor. And the instrument, so as well, will be implemented uh, on the PCB that is compliant with the CubeSat form factor. Uh, that was not done before because it wasn't a CubeSat, but there, were, there was no intelligence. It was just the ADC, but not the microcontroller and all the digital part. Um, and um, for reaching uh, as well, long as because the mission will be longer than cinema, as well for the component uh, should withstand that. And here you can see the lab model of the magic that we are currently working on. It's a little bit larger than the CubeSA standard, but of course there are many more uh, components on it because we have Apart from the classical test point, we have digital potentiometer, voltage and current uh, monitoring. Um, and as I mentioned before, the inboard sensor is on the board. Well, here was still not soldered, but will be it's in this area. So there are the three axes, X, Y, and Z. Um, and as well, the uh, control loop for the inboard and the outboard sensor that is instead deployed. 
Um, and then here, of course, you have the microcontroller and uh, I can spot now the ADC. Um, so yeah, this is the, what we are um, working on at the moment and it's quite just um, reading the email uh, today actually quite good progress in, in that in this and get you farther before the EQM. So, but what about the, the science data? Because uh, it's actually one of the focus of this uh, workshop is how we can really exploit uh, the, um, the scientific data, so the magnetic measurement in the best way. So we can have a first uh, scientific target of interest when there is a particular storm condition we want to monitor. So we can set that or also in conjunction with other mission that would be pretty interesting because we can measure the, the same uh, phenomenon but in, uh, together with, with other missions. So at the same time, we can have multiple data and be and complementing them. Uh, or as well, it can be a guest investigator campaign that we didn't envisage so far, but uh, other people from the science community can make use of this data. Because in the end, um, if we have the, the opportunity to share really uh, the data we get from the mission to the scientific community is uh, a benefit for the mission because it's more successful, but as well for the community itself because we can use data to improve our current understanding of the space weather and the particular storm and sandstorm and how we can predict them or react to them in time. So, um, Basically, uh, the flight heritage and the improved design of the sensor. We have a more optimized and resilient and flexible magnetometer instrument that can be in the future used as a plug and play sensor uh, on CubeSat, either in a constellation uh, formation or as a single hosted payload, or maybe also in other spacecraft as well. And um, this payload, of course, uh, can be used uh, for space weather monitoring in the context of its uh, uh, space isolation environment uh, distributor sensor system. Um, and that I leave you with a final picture of possible constellation of uh, food rad cube for space weather monitoring. And thank you for the attention. Thank you, Chiara. So, questions? Okay, and then I start with a question. Um, so this magnetic cleanliness is apparently quite important. So that's why always the magnetometer sits on a boom. Um, do, does it, is there some, let's say, minimum distance that you must achieve? Um, I, I guess it's exponentially maybe, or, it, or how does it work? Do I have to deploy it at least uh, a meter away from my CubeSat? Can you give some feedback? Yeah, um, so, um, um, on the previous mission, basically, the minimum was uh, at least 50 centimeter from, from the CubeSat. So this, um, um, on this one, we're actually gonna be around eight, 80 centimeter. But it's, so if you think about the size of the CubeSat, it's, uh, it's longer three times the, the, the boom. Um, but uh, from the other side, despite of course we would like to be as uh, far away as possible, on the other side there is the uh, precision on, of the boom, so uh, um, in terms of position. So if we, we can know, if we don't know exactly where it is, it's much more difficult to, to calibrate and then mm -hmm. as well uh, when we are measuring the field. So. In the, the, so the more far away, more tend to be uh, perturbation and vibration of the boom itself. So this is actually is the result for a compromise between like our side, like we don't want to be influenced by the spacecraft field, but uh, on the uh, boom as well. And on the other side, we have as well the inboard sensor that despite is uh, perturbed of course from the spacecraft in the magnetic field, so the magnetic noise can be used to uh, complement the outboard sensor. I have a question uh, regarding the, the cubes at the rat cube. Mm -hmm. What is the status for that? So, um, for the rat cube at the moment, we are just before the critical design review. So, we mm -hmm. probably start to build the EQM after that. 
um, even if we are already in a um, phase that, uh, so with the LAM model, we are ready, but the purpose of the LAM model is really to uh, finalize the, the, the electronics design for the future AQM. Um, and so as well, the, the different parts when you're working, for example, on the boom uh, mechanism subsystem, the um, Center for Energy Research is actually it's the payload manager, so it's have the radiation part of the uh, payload and also managing the whole experiment um, and the, the spacecraft as well. So it's, we say, yeah, in um, design phase at the moment, so yeah. In, in, in the, well, in the previous graphic, do you know the, the vector, the direction of the, ve the, the velocity vector of the CubeSat? So uh, the orientation? It will be three axes, double eyes, and mm -hmm. but uh, I can't tell you yet uh, which exactly which orbit because that was a bit okay. still. But, but they, the boom is on the on one of the long sides. No? Uh, yeah, the boom. Uh, it's uh, uh, now that I remember. It's actually always. Uh, for example, this um, comparing to with the uh, from il illumination point of view. It's uh, it's uh, of the opposite side. Mm -hmm. So when the sun, uh, when the space car is the, on the light side, the the, the boom is in the opposite, in the opposite side. Opposite. Thank you. Questions? No. No. Okay. So, oh, so, yes. Okay. So uh, you are talking about uh, placing the boom. Uh, placing the magnetometer out of the spacecraft because uh, you are interested in, in science and in uh, measuring the, the magnetic field with a lot of precision. But uh, can you place the magnetometer inside and using it for uh, attitude control? Or do, have you think in implement the magnetometer for that use? Um, okay, yeah, yeah, I mean inside there is, uh, there is one on, on the board, yeah. And um, yes, actually, in the in the cinema mission, um, the spacecraft was supposed to spin, but actually it didn't. So there was the, was done uh, in post processing uh, really good work to understand the the attitude of the spacecraft with the magnetic field measurement. So yeah, of course, can be used for that. Despite um, you probably don't need such high precision, and you can find much maybe smaller and cheaper. Uh, component and yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's thank her again.